So this video is on the basics of programming. This includes describing what are variables and how do we use them, and also what are the different types of values or classes that we can place inside of these variables. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the different types of operators that we can use on these variables in order to do some cool stuff. So what is a variable? We've already seen variables before in math class uh, when we started adding letters and stuff into the mix. And the same type of concept applies in computer programming as well. So in math, when we had something like y is equal to x squared, we have a variable y and a variable x. They're called variables because they can vary or change over time. They don't have to have the same static values throughout all of our math or throughout all of our programs in this case. So in MATLAB, we also have variables. And there's some rules that we have to adhere to when we're creating these variables. So the first rule is that all variable names have to start with a letter. So if I wanted to create a variable called Canton, I could have it just like that. It doesn't break any rules and it's a valid variable name because it starts with a letter. Um, so let's say I wanted to have a variable called 34 Canton. This is not a valid variable name because it starts with a number. Like I said before, all variable names have to start with a letter. So that includes not starting with numbers and not starting with any special characters either. And as we're talking about special characters, variables also cannot contain special characters at all. So if I wanted to have a variable, let's say Cantuan with the at sign, that's not valid because it has that special character inside of there. However, I can have underscores inside of my variable names. That's not considered a special character. So I can have something like can underscore one. That's a valid variable name. So on the next slide, I'm gonna have a multiple choice question for you. And I want you to choose all the ones uh, that are valid variable names. So the variable names that were not valid were buzz exclamation point and one, two, three, ABC. So the reason why buzz exclamation point is not valid is because it contains a special character inside of it. That exclamation point is what makes it unvalid. And 123ABC is not valid because it starts with a number. If it had started with a letter, like the other choice did, ABC123, that would be a valid uh, variable name. So now that we've talked about variables, let's talk about the types of values that we can place inside of variables. There's many different types of values, also known as classes, that we can place inside of variables, but I'm just gonna talk about two of them. So one is called double. And the other is called logical. So all a double value is, or the class double, is just all of our different types of numbers. So any number that you can place inside of MATLAB is by default class double. So that includes, if I were to have the number two, if I were to have the number 3.4, if I were to have the number 10,000. All of those are class double. Logical, on the other hand, only has two types of values, and those are true and false. Since we have variables and values, now we want to do some cool stuff with them. And we can use operators in order to do interesting manipulations with our variables and values. So there's many different operators, and the first one we're gonna talk about is the assignment operator. So the assignment operator looks like the equal sign. It's very important that you know that the assignment operator is not the same thing as the equal sign. However, a lot of the times when we're talking about code, we'll say it as if it's equal, but it's not. And let's talk about why it's not. So for instance, let's say I wanted to have this line of code here. So in this line, I'm using the assignment operator, and the way that it works is 
MATLAB reads whatever's on the right hand side of the assignment operator first and assigns it to whatever's on the left hand side. This is a very important concept because as things start becoming more complex, knowing this simple operation will help you figure things out. And so what I mean is, so once again, why, why the assignment operator is not the same thing as the equal sign is let's say we had these two lines of code. Let's say I said a three a is equal to a plus one. Okay. So I have these two lines of code here. And so first MATLAB is going to read this line and then it's going to read this line as well. So in this first line of code, we have the value three being assigned to the variable a. So at this point in time in our command window workspace or in our workspace, we have a variable called a that has the value three. So let us dictate that like this. So right now I have a is equal to three. This is in memory. And now when it gets to the second line of code. So once again, this is the assignment operator, not the equal sign, because in math, we can never have something like this where the left hand and the right hand side have the same variable. And so once we remember that the assignment operator always reads the right hand side first, that makes our job a lot easier. So the first thing that happens is MATLAB reads this right hand side. So it has a plus one. So this a, the current value of a is three. So this is evaluated as three plus one, which is four. And then now this is placed inside of the variable a. So now four is assigned to the variable a. And so in our command window workspace, a is no longer the value of three. It is now four. So as I talked about before in the last example, we can do math to our variables and our values using like the addition sign, subtraction sign, and things like that. Those are all called arithmetic operators. And so a full list of them are where the addition sign, subtraction sign, division sign, multiplication, which is the asterisk, and the caret, which is raising something to the power of. In addition to doing arithmetic on variables and values, we can also do logical operations on them. As we talked about before, a logical is just a true or false value. And anytime we use logical operators, we're going to get back trues or falses. So a list of logical operators in MATLAB are, we have the ampersand, which is the and, we have the pipe, which is the or, the pipe is located above the enter key like if you shift enter in the backslash um we also have the logical equals which is different from the assignment operator we have the not equals we have um so not equal we have greater than we have less than we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So that's a list of all the different types of logical operators. So let's see how these logical operators work. So many of them you're probably already used to uh, because they're the same as what you would use in math, like the greater than, less than, and things like that. So if I had, let's say three is greater than four, clearly three is not greater than four, so this would evaluate to false. And that goes to, um, and that's the same thing that happens with all of the other ones that are similar to the math ones. Now the ones that um, might be new are the and and the or. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out a truth table in order to see how these operators work. All a truth table is is a series of combinations of all the different types of values that you can have and all the different types of outputs you can have based on the operator you're using. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, let's say we had an variable, a variable A and a variable B. Um, and let's say these had the values of true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So I'm abbreviating true and false as just T's and F's. And so if I had A and B, 
Using the AND operator, it is only true if both things on the left side and the right side are true. So true and true evaluates to true. True and false, one of them is false, so the whole thing is false. So that's false. This one, one of them is false. And the last one, both of them are false, so that's also false. And you can kind of think of that as it, it makes logical sense, right? If you say two false things, then the whole statement itself is false. Um, and then so the AND operator, or the OR operator, in order for the whole thing to evaluate to true, only one of them has to be true. So something on the left-hand side or the right-hand side has to be true. So we have true or true, that would be true. True or false, one of them's true, so it's true. False and true, one of them's true. And then false and false, none of them are true, so the whole thing is false. So let's go through this. In the first line of code, we're using the assignment operator in order to assign the double value of two. So this is, this is class double. So we're assigning the double value of two to the variable a. So two is assigned to the variable a. So right now in our workspace, we have a is equal to the double value of two. So now when we come down to this next line of code, remember we're using the assignment operator here. This is the assignment operator, and this is the logical equals. So with the assignment operator, we always do whatever's on the right-hand side first. So we're looking at this right-hand side. And so we have A, we're checking to see if A is logically equal to the value two. So A is currently the double two, so this is substituted as two equal equal two. And so anytime we use a logical operator, we get back logical values. So we have two double equal to, that evaluates to true. So this is true. And now that we've assigned, or now that we've um, evaluated the right-hand side of the assignment operator, now we translate the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. So now in our workspace, we have the variable v, b, is equal to the logical true.